and here we go. This is Flash at the dork table. Dork table, I say. Alone dork table, too, by the way. No hostage today. I'm pretty sure my instruments are reading correctly, and you can hear my wonderful voice by this time. And we're on uh, the 15th of June. Whoosh, where does the time go? <laughs> uh, 20 and 1 9 on the calendar thing. And it's uh, 6 o'clock p.m. here in Denmark. I know you guys are all just in the middle of your day. And anybody that's not having to work and they got a little time to hang around on the dork table, I have a plan for today's show. But first, <laughs> I'm going to say hi to. Uh, uh, oh yeah no no and, and well then I don't sweat it it's chat in a chat room I do the same thing but let me do the introductions and we'll get to that in a minute uh, we got to say hey Grimner I did it by myself which is the goal for me to be uh, you know capable without your constant help so I finally got this far and uh, no hostage on the dork table though but I got a good surprise for you folks so uh, we're going to say hi to the bots and bodies that are, you know, loitering in the real libertymedia.com chat. And the accused are Barman, Grimnir, Brackets DC, Anti, Asmo, Chalcedony, IB Donsey, Java Doctor 2, J Dread, Meisterbrow, Miss Kate, Rob Works, Romes, Vanna White, Weather Dork, Z Beth Z, the Phantom, and well then, Beetle, Cirque, well, Circle, Sir, uh, sorry, honey, fucking up your name, Cyborg Noodle, me, Frump, t Frump P, Graham Z, Gromit, J's Nines, J's Kiss, Mmm, Moose Girls, was that 12 or 2? I don't know. It's got all kinds of weird things. Maybe it's a mark on my computer screen. <laughs> anyway, Sock Puppet and the up and coming bot of the RLM, the Smot Ass bot. And he's coming along. I've seen um, I've seen times where the text actually makes sense. So, you know, t if you can teach me to speak, I guess you can teach a computer to do it. Not that hard of a thing when you think about it. But earlier in the chat today, I was doing my usual bantering back and forth and this, that, and the other. And two things happened. One is I said hello to Frumpy under uh, his T ending name. And I usually just type a F and three dots. And I forget other people don't know when they see my text. It's... It's usually specifically at somebody in particular. And if you don't understand it, you're not who it's to. It's different. It's like a inside joke crap, that kind of thing. Just being familiar with somebody else at a, a different amount of time on the chat room. So he misunderstood my thing, got a little hot at me, and I got a little defensive, and then we worked it out, which is what we're supposed to do as, oh, thank you, Grimmer, as a, uh, grown adults, you know, playing terrible games in a chat room because a lot of this stuff is real uh, personal, politics, religion, uh, where you eat your freaking food and drink your coffee. I mean, it, you know, Starbucks might be a, a good laugh for me, but apparently there's people out there that support whatever the fuck it is and purchase their shit. And I don't have respect for that, but that's my opinion. And I'm not going to uh, put a fake opinion on the RLM chat to please the group, so I'm, I'm not out of line and out of pocket. So, just thought I'd take a minute to talk about that shit on the radio. It's not like anybody really is going to lose any sleep about my opinion about what they think anyway. And if you are losing sleep over it, wow, you need to pay attention to your own reality. Because I'm just reporting, you know, I'm observing and reporting what I see and telling other people about it. Not telling you what to think or who to believe or what not to believe. Just showing you what I think. And I don't think it's uh 
I don't want to be one of those tell everybody people. Nah, I'm just talking. I have opinions. I have some experience that's very unique, and I wouldn't expect anyone else to uh, make the decisions in life the by the the way that I do, because I'm very impulsive. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, so let's get back to the chat here. We got me and uh, and well then worked out our little misagree uh, misunderstanding, disagreement uh, about chat because that's what happens. Sometimes you read it wrong. And it's easy to be pissed. I mean, we're already pissed off people. Just add a little insult to the pissed offness that's going on around you, you know, in the uh in the electronic world cuz it it affects us. I think it has a a profound effect on me and it it sets itself out in my mood and luckily for me the physical world and the uh, electronic world are so different I can tell the difference physically which one is which when I go outside in the public everything is good and today I've never done this on the dork table before I think I've read a link or two but I've got something up my sleeve and this is purposely from Wikipedia all right and I'm gonna read it and the reason I'm gonna read it I'm gonna post it on the main feed right now is not because I believe in it or not because I don't believe in it but it was originally probably not written the way that I'm gonna read it to you today and if you do enough research or if you're familiar enough with this topic you'll know by the You'll know by the link, by looking at it. And we all know Wikipedia is just uh, notorious for screwing up the truth. So, this is what I found when I opened up a <clears throat> list of amendments to the United States Constitution. And, <laughs> yeah, isn't that something? Uh, on the dork table here in June of two zero one and nine and I, I think I wanted to do this because people need to be reminded about the truth and the, the truth's in this shit somewhere it just it's been kind of juggled around and they moved this they took that out and they replaced certain things with other shit and as they did that over the years well when you amend a document it changes the document that's what an amendment is now how much of this was amended uh, I wasn't around for any of it. I'm just reading old stuff that was here when I was, you know, born. And we're going to start off with, okay, the top here. List of amendments to the United States Constitution from Wikipedia, the free <laughs> encyclopedia. <laughs> Sorry about the laughing. I do that when I get nervous about this stuff I'm going to read. This article is about the 32, 33 constitutional amendments approved by Congress and sent to the states for ratification since 1789. For proposals to amend the, the United States Constitution introduced in but not approved by the U.S. Congress, <laughs> see list of proposed amendments to the United States Constitution. And I think the income tax law is one of the ones you'll you'll find in that because the income tax law does not exist. It's, it was never ratified by any, and it wasn't ratified by enough of a majority to pass it. So they just pretended it's there. Yeah, you'll get to that eventually, or you won't. This is like a freedom site. So <laughs> the Constitution on a freedom <laughs> site. I hope you. Uh, I hope you get the gist of this, Grim, because I'm not, I'm not pushing the politics of it. I just want to see what the fuck it says and read it out loud. It, it's different when you read things out loud for some reason. Anyway, <laughs> okay, I think I got my laughing under control. Let's give this a whirl. And here we go. 33 amendments to the United States Constitution have been proposed by the United States Congress and sent to the states for ratification. Since the Constitution was put into operation on March 4th, 1789, well, the English still occupied 
the America through that period too. They didn't leave until about about then, so or maybe somewhere in the 90s. Anyway, back to my story. 27 of these, having been ratified by the requisite number of states, are part of the Constitution. The first 10 amendments were adopted and ratified simultaneously and are known collectively as the Bill of Rights. Six amendments adopted by Congress and sent to the states have not been ratified by the required number of states. Four of these amendments are still technically open and pending. One is closed and has failed by its own terms, and one is closed and has failed by the terms of the resolution proposing it. All 33 amendments are listed and detailed in the tables below. Uh, let's see what have we got here on the old American stuff, because people want to know these things, you know. Hmm. I was just stalling for a sip of my elixir. Okay, meanwhile, back in the amendments. Um, Article 5 of the United States Constitution details... The two-step process for amending the nation's frame of government. Amendments must be properly proposed and ratified before becoming operative. This process was designed to strike a balance between the excess of constant change and inflexibility. Wow. I don't think it worked. Mm. An, an amendment may be proposed and sent to the states for ratification by either the United States Congress whenever to a two-thirds majority in both the Senate and the House of Representatives deem it necessary, or a national convention called by Congress for this purpose on the application of the legislatures of two-thirds currently 34 of the states. Uh-oh, where did my... there it is. Lost my cord. <laughs> okay. To become part of the Constitution, an amendment must be ratified by either as determined by Congress. The legislatures of three-fourths, currently 38 of the states, within the stipulated time period of one is set, or by this legal jiggle beagle stuff. It's so confusing to my little brain. I'm stealing from Miss Mary. Thank you, Miss Mary. Now, where was I? State ratifying conventions in three-fourths, currently 38 of the states, within the stipulated time period, if one is set, when a constitutional amendment is sent to the states for ratification, the archivist of the United States is charged with responsibility for administering the ratification process under the provisions of 1. USC, blah, 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 some jibble jarble I could not really make sense if I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> then upon being properly ratified, the archivist will, con it, the archivist, uh, wow, archivist, <laughs> sorry folks, I lost my spot here. Uh, issues a certificate proclaiming that an amendment has become an operative part of the Constitution. Because this stuff is so wordy and complicated that, I mean, why can't it just be simple? No, they got to make big, important things out of something like, mind your own business, don't stab your neighbor in the eye with your dinner fork, and keep your dick out of the cows, for crying out loud, Wayne. We've had enough of that. <laughs> But no, what do people do? They go to government to make laws so other people can be punished for what they themselves are too cowardly to go to the other guy and put him in his place for doing. That's why I say bring back dueling. Society clean up in about 12 hours. Of course, the, uh, the body count would be huge. But, you know, you've got to give people a chance or they get stagnant and they don't fight back. I think that's what we got bunch of people that are stagnant like me I'm stagnant I'm not fighting anybody for nothing I don't give a fuck 
And oddly enough, all the threats of, you know, the internet, there's nobody threatening me to do anything to me or take nothing from me. Um, and even if they did, I, I don't know how seriously I would take it, you know, um, yeah, uh, I don't know, I was just looking at the chat there, and it kind of distracted me from my story, back to my story, <laughs> Woody's doing your mama so fat jokes, <laughs> approximately 11,770 proposals to amend the Constitution have been introduced to Congress since 1789, as of January 3rd, 2019. Collectively, members of the House and Senate typically propose around 200 amendments during each two-year term of Congress. Boy, that generates a lot of waste. Wow, what a losing game this is. Okay, back to the story. Most, however, never get out of the congressional committees in which they were proposed and only a fraction of those that do receive enough support to win congressional approval to go through the constitutional ratification process. Beginning in the early 20th century, Congress has usually but not always stipulated that an amendment must be ratified by the required number of states within seven years from the date of its submission to the states in order to become part of the Constitution. <sighs> <laughs> Congress author Congress's authority to set ratification deadline was affirmed by the United States Supreme Court in Coleman v. Miller, some case, 307 U.S. 433, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. Well, I, I just think that everything I just read so far was jibber-jabber and uh, nonsense. Didn't really mean anything to me. I mean, on a, on a personal level. Now, if I ran a business and I was preparing to take, you know, control of my my uh, employees and have them produce something, I think that's the route I'd go. The Constitution would be a a nice binding, you know, document. Okay, you're gonna follow these rules and you're gonna wear this color and you're gonna do what I say. Or we're gonna put you in jail for treason. I wonder how many people today <laughs> are guilty of, of the act of treason because they use the free speech amendment that was taken away from them in 2001 and don't know it. <laughs> because we have this wacky government thing going on, all of us, uh, even where I'm at. It's just I don't listen to them because I don't know what they're fucking saying because I don't speak Danish. And I'm telling you, that's one of the nicer things about not speaking the local language. I never hear any bad news. Except the worst news I've heard ever here is, we're going to get rain. <laughs> so if you're stuck outside, you know, be, be warned ahead. You need an umbrella. I mean, there's my life problem living in this place, not speaking the language. And people, oddly enough, don't walk up to me in the places and go, hey, you're breaking the law. You're doing this. You're doing that. Let me see your ID. Let me see some papers. I haven't uh, openly, I haven't carried ID in a pocket out in the street since I was in uh, North Carolina. <laughs> so it's been a lot of years. I've got some of the ID left over that I, I did have to get to get the passport. <laughs> but uh, I've been away so long, a few things have expired. <laughs> And I don't want to get them replaced because I live where I'm at, which is just fine with me. Now, in the meantime, I was just digesting all that. I don't know what the fuck that was all about. It really doesn't tell me anything except these guys have a bunch of shit to say. They get paid for saying it. Uh, so they send it to their higher ups and their higher ups say, no, you've wasted a whole shitload of time only, uh, this percent of that work is worth even repeating. So, but they still get paid for the shitty work they did. Well, I wonder who pit, who pays the bills. <laughs> well, okay, I understand we live on credit, credit, period. You don't own anything. It's all owned by somebody else. We use it, but we pay in in forms of paper and electronic. 
that's not currency. That's that's not finance. Well, maybe it's finance, if you, depending on your uh, your definition of finance. I got bored with this uh, link. I don't know what came over me, but I just had this urge to do something political, politically motivated. And it led me, oh, okay, what started it was, now I can go back to the beginning of that. We just shift gears completely. Me and Hans were chatting. And me and Hans disagree on the main feed. And I say this, and he says that. <laughs> and, and one of his comments was, uh, you know, I'm just jealous because uh, I'm one of the kind of people that will beg for rights, basically, in the long run. And I had to remind my good friend that, no, my rights aren't granted to me or protected by a government or you know, a group of thieves. No, yours are. Mine, I don't, I just live. I don't live by that sick mentality of who do I owe my uh, allegiance to, you know. What, what for? To go to the store in safety? I mean, I do that every freaking time I go there. There's no threat. People are kind. And uh, even the little children smile and wave at me when I pass them by in their homes. <coughs> so hmm. the world that I live in is great. And I don't feel that uh, that defensiveness that I felt in the city when it was overcrowded. Always being on your guard, you know, because somebody out there is going to try to figure out how to separate you from the shit you have. Well, that's just part of city life. You kind of, it's, it's not a problem. What's what I'm make, what I'm using it as a point of is coming out of it and then settling down in this slow, rural, foreign thing. Is I'd recommend it to anybody. Just don't come to Denmark because <laughs> uh, I'm here, <laughs> and I'm telling you, I make I, I make a lousy neighbor. <laughs> don't don't I, honey? Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I wouldn't know what to say about that. But uh, any place that you go, I think that however you feel your surroundings are, well, you're the one looking out at it. So hmm. I can only imagine what people, you know, like Rob. Rob seems comfortable. Grim. Grim seems comfortable. You know, the the two I pick on the most about on the RLM. I try to leave the ladies out of it. Uh, not get too involved with, because uh, I'm a married fella here, folks. Can't be flirting with all the young babes anymore. So those days are all over anyway. I'm like 90. How old am I, honey? 305. I'm 305. <laughs> anyway, so being as uh, that got me started on looking up what Wikipedia had to say, and it was all legal bullshit about voting. And not really telling you anything about what they did or why they deserve to be supported for their entire fucking life. Do 30, 40 years in Congress and be supported for the rest of their days by the government on a fiat currency that's not real. So, hmm. we're all living the same freaking illusion. It's just some people eat better than others, you know. Uh, some people get better quality depending on the amount of fiat they have to, to spend to survive in the societies we've made. <laughs> made. Well, I believe these things were, you know, handed to us. And if you reject it, well, then you get to, to talk to hands about how fucked up you are. <laughs> because, well, you know, society just doesn't work because you smoke pot and don't agree with me. Hmm. I don't... I'm not so much sure that's what it is. I think it's a lot different. I think the uh, freedom for other people is just as important as my own. You know, If the folks I lived amongst didn't seem free to me, I think I'd feel it. But they, they wander around aimlessly with their children and at their feet, at their sides, carrying them, walking with them, all kinds of crazy shit, on bikes. I've seen it all in this place. And uh, it's just as normal now as it was when I got here. And I'm still enjoying just the the simple, easy, uh, hmm, the easy, quiet life, I suppose you'd call it. But, oh, let me mention this, too. Miss Mary, I was listening to her 
podcast today, and she will not be uh, with us on RLM this week. She's got some family business going on. So if you're uh, on here, Mental's on. Well, I know Mental will catch the re, the re, re uh, thing when you post it, but uh, he's not here today. I've seen him before on uh, Minds. Oh, well, I'm going to be mental pancake pancakes less today. <laughs> That's kind of weird. But eh, And we got the chitter-chatters going on. Sock Puppet has returned from off doing other things. And Rob and... Oh, I guess we lost the J-Dread, fella. Oh, well. But they're chitter-chattering on the RLM feed today about absolutely nothing as usual. Hmm. Let me go back a little further and quote Grimner. He says, Flash, I prefer sedition over treason, but that's just me. Well, all I'm saying is is that legally, you know, it depends on who wants to push it and how far and what you did, but there's a lot of treasonous acts in word and deed that you may not even be aware of. You say it, you post a link, or you like a link, and... If it's treasonous legally, that would probably implicate anybody that was attached to it. But fortunately, there's just a lot of bean counters. and The enforcement that they got right now seems to depend on guns. You know, the, the more... They're not seeming to rely on, you know, like, door-to-door -door anything. And when they do, it's always with arms. So, hmm, I don't know. But the public is so gullible. Maybe they'll believe, yeah, I'm here to p pick up your gun. The government sent me, and then you take it from them, and you shoot them, and you rob them, because they're gullible. <laughs> I don't know. I don't foresee a good ending to uh, what's coming. The future is looking a little bit bleak. Oh, and then you got old uh, the Rothschilds want us to go to war with Iran, us being the U.S., of course, and its allies, of which I still sit on the dirt of an ally of that crap, unfortunately. But personally, I'm not for any of the crap. I think they should just disband the whole fucking thing and leave each other alone. Put your attention on food and fuel sources that won't kill you while you use them, like hemp and cannabis. And knock off all the stupidity. I mean, crying out loud. But, uh, I guess it's... It's attractive to a certain kind of demented mind, you know. The kid that was beaten up all his, all his life, you know, bullied and ranked, just treated like shit. Then he grows up and gets big, and all of a sudden that poor fucking little guy that was getting teased and tossed around is big. So he turns into a bully because he has a bad childhood. People didn't like him. And then they hire him to be cops because you can't be smart enough to have a real job and be a cop. Now, it's my understanding of this, too. This is the way I see it. you got to think like the fucker you're chasing to catch him. So, either the police is full, chock full of idiots that are telling lies that don't know their ass from their elbow, or takes one to know one. Maybe a little of both. But uh, the results will... Hmm. The results will probably devastate a normal person if they looked at what the police have been doing to Americans, you know, for, for the last 20, 30 years now. And it's gotten a lot worse, you know. Uh, they used to say sir and ma'am and all that and smile at you. And now they just ask you for your freaking papers hoping that you got a warrant for your arrest so they can make some money. You know, they have quotas to fill and uh, shit like that. Pot, weed, marijuana versus cannabis and hemp. No, there's no such thing as marijuana. That's a made-up word to criminalize pot. But we all use it. I've been using it my whole life. I'm just as stuck on the word as you are. But I'm convinced, like Mary and Vince, that the vibration... Some people, maybe Rob works too. I think Rob got me really started on this stuff. But other people are more deep into words than Rob. Rob's more of a typer than a speaker. And he does radio. I heard him do radio. He does good radio. But he's just not as, uh, I don't know, maybe not as outward going as as I am about doing the radio. I don't give a fuck. 
<laughs> it's just what I think. Hey, there's mental. <laughs> I figured he'd show up sooner or later. No, I didn't figure he would. I just figured if, if it wouldn't surprise me if he did, because he's probably the my number one fan on the freaking radio now. It used to be Miss B Down Under, but uh, she got reclusive and decided to take a break from it, from us, I guess. But we can find her on realliberty.org. She will post occasionally on there, say hi, hey, and check in, but she's not feeling real talkative lately, so. But mental, every week I get a, a hello from my pal Mental Pancakes. So. It's nice to be remembered, you know, and thought of in a good light for a change by somebody that actually knows me, you know, instead of the, you know, the uh, flash somebody on the computer screen is one part of me. And then, just like everybody else, fuck, there's other parts you, you don't you don't put out in the public for everybody to see. It's not what we do. People that are whatever I am. <laughs> oh, they're talking about dated terms. Okay, well, dated terms, but terms for it. Yeah, weed and doobie. <laughs> International. I'll tell you one thing. If I put my two fi fingers together like in an okay sign and bring it to my face the smokers will let you know here they're not shy people uh, I'm passed by somebody rolling a spliff probably once a month or so on an average and then you got a lot of the vapors so they've made these um, hash pipes that look like the vape pipes or you can use the vape pipe with the hash or whatever the fuck the case is see people go down this damn street but the way they're holding their pipe makes me more pay more attention to him than other people and sometimes i think i caught me a, a fellow pothead wandering down the streets the mean streets of freddy town being a menace to society because <laughs> that's that's it it's like the it, it's like the way they hijacked anarchism to to make a movie and and do you know hollywood and their stupidity but if you convince people that a word means something, m most of them won't take the time to, to look for the truth and go, hey, wait a minute, that can't be that. What could it be? Well, then we got Wikipedia. And Wikipedia can be updated and changed to, to fit the point you want to make. <laughs> so it's it's a really bad example of information, but it's, it's a great playground for a, an interesting mind. You don't have to look for comedy in life. It's there right in front of you. It just doesn't always seem like comedy to everybody at the same time. Like Mary. Mary talks about George Carlin. Oh, he wasn't joking. Uh, no, but if he would have tried to get up there and talk like that about the government as a commentary, he wouldn't have had the audience he had. So the powers that be, I think, kind of confined him to this comedy thing where only so many people would pay attention to him and then when he got to congress and spewed at congress then they i think they hard attacked him after that because one of the last things i heard him say live uh, in an interview was ah, i should live another 25 years i feel good he'd gotten over his wife's death and he was doing hbo specials all the freaking time so no i i have a very uh deep-rooted suspicion of the government in the first place and usually when something I like goes quickly and unexpectedly like that I think the government had something to do with it I must be a conspiracy theorist gonna get myself blocked off all the interweb places to be heard <laughs> the fringe <laughs> the fringe of the fringe of the fringe and I looked over on bit shoot right so I did this, uh, v Vinny and me did another show on Tuesdays, and it's called In a Perfect World. And me and Vinny have had the worst time being together at the same time on that particular show. He would not show up, or he'd go on a thing, or he'd come back, then he'd be there for two months, then he'd go away again, and we're in a go-away mode right now. He went and hit the river. So he, he dumped me again with the other show. So I moved the time of the show to be comfortable for me. <laughs> I'm doing that show, 
at 8 in the morning, my time in Denmark, which is the middle of the night for everybody that knows me on Real Liberty Media, because I'm six to eight hours ahead of you, or nine if you're on the West Coast. Uh, so there you go. And I found, I, I kind of did it to see. And uh, when Grim put it on up on BitChute, I still got a little bit of an audience, even though I wasn't live. So <laughs> it, it worked. <laughs> I got my point across. I had some links to read that night or that morning or whatever it was and <laughs> day, night, something like that. And uh, it worked. Grim did his thing and it got posted and people looked at it or heard it, whatever you call it. So there you go. And I think like uh, 20 years from now when me and Vinny are gone, you know, whatever the hell that comes of that. Vinny's going to be remembered in history as the guy that did all that shit at the Bundy Ranch. And me, not so much. But they're going to notice me because I was the idiot that did radio with the guy that did the Bundy Ranch information. And if it gets a hold, you know, if somebody gets a hold of it and can keep it alive, and we can have that in the future. Because the, the way the system looks like it's going... It wants to write the narrative to read the way it wants it read, not the way it happened. Just like everything else. So, hmm. uh, And I got that idea from when they took off my, uh, my medical link about, uh, what was it called? Uh, medicine by death. Jennifer, Dr. Jennifer Daniels, too. And, uh, and it said, well, the, the owner of the link pulled it off. And I doubt that. The owner of the link w was living in a foreign country to avoid prosecution by America for something. Because she went against Rockefeller Medicine. And when you do that openly in public, well, <laughs> some people do not like you when you go all ape shit like that. Give me a second to finish some coffee here, folks. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> and today's broadcast is being brought to you by Grimnir at reallibertymedia.com. And, uh, oh yeah, I haven't done this for a bit. And if you're feeling generous out there in my hardcore 24 out there in uh, BitChute land, you know the drill. You got a few extra ducats, send them to Grimnir to keep the site going. Because this, I don't, no, nah, I do this because I want to. Uh, even if I got popular, I wouldn't want money for doing this. This is me telling you guys what I think, and it, it's just an opinion. It's not that valuable. So let's see what Grimner has to say going here. Uh, ah, I hope to not be remembered by anyone for anything, Flash. Whoa, I don't know. I, don't, I think it's all relative. You know, the people that you... Um, have etched in your own memory might be in yours and you might be in theirs too you never know you know there's some some memories that you have of other people that you no matter how old I've gotten I still remember certain people in the past not everybody some some incidences have uh, hold on they've uh, faded off and some are just as clear as when they happened you know, in my mind, in my mind's eye, I have a visual. I don't know if other people can do that. It might be the, the key to how I can draw is I cannot, like, see it in my head and it transfers to my hand or something. It's kind of hard to explain, but Cirque saw me do it. it it's, a, <laughs> it's a unique thing, but I believe it. See, that's why I think we're all the same thing is... If I believe something's true, it's true. I've been married to Cirque for five years. Figure that one fucking out. Come on. I'm not nice and lovey-dovey and all that kind of crap compared to Circle. Circle's a loving, warm person. And me, I come from the city. <laughs> I come from L.A., man. Don't fuck with me, man, or I have to shoot you in your foot. <laughs> uh, that's where I come from. Yeah, and... The difference in cultures on top of it is just so different. Uh, I don't know. There, I guess it's the mixture of the place I'm from compared to the not mixture of Denmark. 
even when they have mixes here, they, they tend to live in neighborhoods. So this neighborhood is that. If they're going to be a foreign race, it'll be a them from that country in that area. So where I was from, it was so vast. You could have German neighbors, Irish neighbors, but it was pretty much white. Uh, then there was me, the Mexican Jew. Nobody knew what to do with that one. <laughs> the, <laughs> the whole neighborhood was just, you know, standard whatever was uh, at the time considered acceptable, I suppose. But when you start mixing the Mexicans with the Jews, <laughs> what do you get? <laughs> like a Molotov cocktail <laughs> waiting for some way, place to go off. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just joking. But uh, it's like, how do you, how would you, exp I don't know if I've ever had to feel anything about being a mixed blooded person. I and mean, it doesn't, doesn't affect my thinking as far as I'm concerned or aware. But it makes you the uh, subject of jokes. And when people are joking, it, eh, sometimes it, it, depending on the person, can scratch you a little bit because you're sensitive. <clears throat> and other people can say the root, like Rob Works, can tell me anything on his mind, say it however he pleases, and I, I don't react negative to Rob's um, stuff. Because I've just accepted it somehow that Rob's sometimes sarcastic. Okay, there you go. Sometimes, not always. When he's serious, he's serious. When he's sarcastic, he's playing around. Don't be all, you know, grow up. Take a joke. It's not a big fucking thing. So I got that from Rob, and, and I used it with um, Vinny sorting out a problem. You know, face off and, and deal with it. Because in the long run, here's what I really think. Is, <laughs> you're going to love this one is at some point we're all wrong at the same time. It's not because we're right about anything. When you're right about something, you don't need to be reassured that you're fucking right. You're just right. There you go. Uh, other people need um, the spoken word. They need that vibration. And I'm not one of them, so I've uh, not grown up with all that. I was telling my wife about that. And it's so hard to believe from her side because she's so opposite of me in the growing up department. That side of being rebellious towards uh, school, maybe, or the society, she wasn't. My wife is not a completely compliant, <laughs> uh, easy to control personality. She just knows how to type so that you can't really... Uh, hmm. It's not really mean. It's more like when it is mean, it's obvious. And when it, in the rest of the time, she's dangling us. And what I learned to understand about the way Cirque types is there's a lot of words that she doesn't have in Danish or use. Their sentence structure is different. That's why I'm not real concerned about learning the Danish either. The whole thing is different compared to what I'm used to. And I probably need it like when I go out to the bar. And even then, drunk people at a bar, no, I'd rather not speak the freaking language. It's, uh, it's, more, it's a more um, fulfilling way to damage myself with alcohol, I think. Because I'm one of those that believes sir, that uh, alcohol is an inhibitor. It restricts you. It doesn't free you and loosen your tongue. I mean, it might appear that way. But the reality of it is it's inhibiting your common sense and control. You know, the limits that you're willing to put yourself through, they drop with the more alcohol you drink, the lower your, your standards are. And society loves that shit, man. They can fuck you up with law up one side and down the other if you're drunk enough. But when you're stoned, really? Because I, I think uh, Hansel was going back on I'm a... Um, drug addict because I smoke uh, hash. I don't know what being a drug addict has to do with smoking hash, but, you know, when you have a limited understanding of the world around you, then you're prone to make, uh, you know, circle jerk fucking calls like drug addict. You know, what does it fucking even mean? Big Pharma has more victims than illegal drugs. They've done the math, uh, the amount of illegal people, take 100% of drug addicts, 
both legal and illegal. The illegal part is about 10% of the total. So, hmm. most of the folks that are suffering from as a result of using drugs are doing it because a doctor told them to. So, hmm. the rest of them, the one out of ten, those fuckers don't give a shit. They're going to do what they fucking please. And if you don't like it, do something about it. And that's the kind of society that we got. Instead of a, <laughs> Instead of like Portugal... What Portugal did, they decriminalized all the drugs. It's not illegal. They treat it like an illness. And, of course, because they did that, they claim crime and all these other problems have diminished to a degree. They're gone down. They're not getting worse. And the attention on the drugs to get them, to obtain them, because they're so openly free now, drops. See? When you give people what they want, a lot of them really don't want it. They, A lot of people in that kind of a situation want what they can't have is what it is. And some folks, when they get what they want, well, then they don't want it no more. And that was the, uh, that was the kind of the thing with the drugs from my looking onto it. And what little bit of drug using I have done in my life, uh, taught me enough to know what I know and you can't really explain these particular details to other people it's a uh, very um, selfish to uh, judge other people for what they put in their body you know what the part I'm pissed off about is that it's the government and the fucking uh, medical industry that lied and bullshitted us since they learned how to print on paper about everything so here we are believe in a I had just a ton of bullshit because it's what we know so maybe what you know isn't all that fucking important hmm. just my opinion but that's why I don't try to hold a degree in uh, conversation I know this and I know that no nah, fuck I read this somewhere I saw this link the real experience is personal you're not gonna I'm not going to do radio about that. This stuff's all about the subjective side of looking at the world outside of me, whatever I see. And it can't possibly be the same thing that you see. Because, for one, you're way over there somewhere, and I'm over here. And that just opened a doorway for me at a long ways back in life to, hmm, Wonder what's over there and, and not be so assuming, you know, oh, I know what's going to happen and I never knew what was going to happen. I can predict an event or a moment or a thing here and there, but the overall, I know what's going to happen. No, no. And very uh, strange, but once once in a while, something will go wrong. We had a, a cab driver wrecked his, his van right in front of our house one night. Ran into the with his mirror, he misjudged the the distance and hit the pole with his mirror, and they had the police and that, but they had it all cleaned up and done in like thirty minutes from the beginning to the end. They didn't linger. They didn't knock on everybody's door and ask for witnesses. I'm sure if anybody had anything to say here, they would have gone to the cop and said, "Hey, I saw this happen. This is what I saw," and they don't bother you the way that the intrusiveness of the cops that I, I came from to the ones that I saw in Scotland and England, of Canada, Mexico, and and now Denmark, the U.S. is completely different from those other countries. And well, going back in years to Canada and Mexico, back to the 90s, but things might have changed there since I was there. Scotland, I was just in Scotland five, five years ago. Wait a minute. Holy shit, sir. I, well, I guess it sounds like a longer time when you say it out loud. Uh, but, hmm. well, my theory is I'm only going to live once. Let's see. Get high and win seven gold medals. Oh, yeah. You know what else I've been reading links about is uh, the cross-gender people uh, going over to the women's sports and then dominating the shit out of the women because they're men. Because, but they're girls. But they're not girls 
with the girls. What? This scammy, you know, word game play that people are playing on us is gotten out of fucking hand. And people will believe any bullshit that they they're told as long as they read it under the right, you know, uh, writer. Maybe the right article is in the right newspaper or whatever the hook is to the those <laughs> the state and you know, the people that support this crap. And all day long I was over on mines and I tell you I saw a lot of people paying attention to the false flag of this new ship being bombed or whatever hit, struck, on fire, something. But they can show you a picture of a boat on fire in water. How do you know that's the one that got hit? <laughs> I mean I you know, we have video machines now, people. We got instant everything. If you want to see the truth, all you gotta do know somebody that's there that'll tell you the truth like Vinny and man I'm convinced about all that too someday down in history but for right now you know right now me and Vinny are just kind of uh, obscure commentaries off way off in the fringe and we we don't represent anybody but Vinny wants the truth out there and I me I don't think uh, I don't think the truth isn't out there. I think it's just misrepresented so that you wouldn't recognize the truth if it slapped you in the face. Uh, nor would you believe it because it would crush it would crush your identity as a statist. Uh, I don't know if I was really a statist, but American, yeah, in a foreign land, you get a little different. The Scots are pretty, pretty cruel people. You get pretty thick skin towards... Uh, foreigners to you know you're my country you know what I mean sir so here I am I'm in, in these foreign people's countries and I can just considered I'm a guest in your country I'll abide by your rules and all that but the Scots kind of take it more personal because my mother is English so there's one strike already they hate me because my mom's English so you know it just gets more the more you get into the groups the different groups of this, and the, the more you see what a sh you know, what a sham and a fucking game it truly is. And then being mixed blood like I am, I don't give a fuck who you are, because I got teased all of, you know through my childhood and in my adult years over religion and just stupid shit that I don't give two fucks about. <laughs> but uh, I didn't care then. I don't care now. But it seemed like. Uh, a weaker mind, uh, yeah, I agree, Grim, uh, but a weaker mind would uh, lash out. Like, the only person I get really personally upset with is the one that's rude and nasty to everybody equally. You know, never nice to anyone on it for any reason. Bashes women openly. No, go away. I don't need you. So when I see you, I'm going to remind you what a prick you are. That's just kind of the way I am. That's why I'm so popular with people. The truth is the truth. Whether I'm speaking it or not, you can't hide the truth behind a few words on a chat screen. People know. Good God. Grow up. <laughs> oh, he's not. A, yeah, I know he's on a river trip, Grim. But uh, Vinny is. Oh, no, man. So I didn't read that. No, Vinny's not here with us. Uh, you weren't here yet when I I'd already mentioned that. Vinny uh, did a river trip. I think he left a week ago. But good luck to him. I hope he has a freaking blast out there. He works hard enough on this radio stuff. you know. And I know what he's doing. And I think we all know what he's doing. It's just right today. Somebody's got to fucking do it. And he's the only one that's doing it. <laughs> so there you go. But you can't blow your own freaking horn. You got to let people be how they are and the closer that you are to somebody else the less openly or less attention they're going to give you openly you know it's, you're already their friend what you, they need constantly be told oh you're right you're right you're right you're right you're right no that's a yes man now what so but Vinny's got himself boxed into a, a like a bubble that's all he'll either see it or he won't and that's my opinion and I'm entitled to that, and I don't know. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't irritate me as much as Rob works. You know, gets irritated. I don't. I don't know why. 
can't explain personal taste. You know, uh, I'm sure I irritate certain people. That's life. Certain people irritate me. And then there's a few people that can only irritate me for a few moments and then it goes away. Like my wife. But every, you know, like maybe twice a year, we might not see quite eye to eye on something trivial, but that's it. So, well, that's not a bad deal to me because some people like to really fight and I don't. I like to go, go oh, fuck you. I see it. See you in the next world. I'm out of here. Because fighting just, wow, if you watch enough movies like I have, you'll probably believe at some level that fighting can end up in fatality. And it don't want it to be me, and I sure as fuck don't want to kill anyone else. So instead of the fight, I went, you know, nah, fuck it. Well, that's not how everybody else thinks. Some people, they've got this idea in their head that uh, they're going to stay and fight and die or some shit. And no, I've been beat up and didn't like that and said, I ain't dying for nobody else. <laughs> if it's going to happen, it's going to be, you know, because I chose it, not because government said to or state said to or any of that shit. And I've been right so far. Can't comp you know, you can't really argue with somebody that's older than you are about how they got that old because they're the ones that did it. Grimner's probably got a, a wild past of his own to tell, I'm sure. Teenager in L.A. We're, we're like a year apart, give or take. And uh, so I remember my teenage years in L.A. And I don't think, and I went to San Diego. Well, I went to uh, Coronado Island to visit an uncle. But not to San Diego. That never really spent any time there, but on the island. And uh that was it. But <laughs> I know I know where you grew up. And it couldn't have been uh any different than me. I mean LA was like all the way you, you could almost drive from well, not all of it then, but La Mirada was there and Orange you know, Orange County. Well, there was a lot of things that came along in the 70s uh, but I'll tell you when I left that area you could drive from LA to San Diego and business businesses and, and uh, residentials all the way both sides of the interstate and sometimes as far as the eye could see they gobbled up all that land and it just overpopulated the fuck out of it so what me and Grim got was the before it collapsed, when it started to get a chokehold on the population, physically, the, the beginning of the 70s was about the beginning of it. But by the time the 80s came, that that was it. That 10-year stretch, whew, boy, we went from being free and doing things to rules and regulations. Because Mr. Uh, Reagan wasn't going to have any of that shit. But it was, what's his name, uh... Carter that gobbled up the education system, and it was Reagan that fucked it in the ass. So here we all are now, and people talk about education like it's a good thing to go out and get in debt to learn to do something that will not earn you a living to pay for the debt. Now, what kind of world are we in when? Hmm. So I come over to this other country, and apparently. And this is what I've been told, and this is what everybody's doing. The state here finances your education. Got a uh, Cirque's cousin, right? Your cousin is, yeah, I, I won't mention his name, but Cirque's cousin is a student right now. And he's been considering doing more school to get a better thing at the end of the school. So I just tell him good luck. I don't have a... I don't have a positive uh, history from education to be all gung-ho about it. But the way they explain it to me, it gives me no reason to ever say anything negative about because their deal is way better than what we had. We were expected to pay for our education, and here they train you and support you to get it so that you'll be a part of the, you know, the system that you're in. And I guess they call that socialism or nationalism. What is it, sir? 
I well, Cirque doesn't have an opinion on it. I'm sure she's so far from politics; it's not funny. But uh, whatever the fuck it is in America, like the here is the left is the right in America. Is the left is the uh, conservative side, and the right is the liberal side, where it's the other way around where I'm from. So we get a giggle out of that controversy right there. Yeah, fuck L.A. Well, you know what? I grew up in L.A., so I had a blast in L.A. And I used to go to Orange County all the time, but uh, mostly L.A. I spent a lot a lot of my first oh, 16 years there when I wasn't splitting off. But I always went north when I left home. I never went down to San Diego. I would go north up to towards my goal was Bellingham, Washington. I told that, that on the dork table about that extravaganza once. It was weird. And I was just a, a kid, but I could convince people I was a few years older than I really was by speaking with them. So, well, it would open the door for adult problems that I didn't quite understand at the time I was doing what I was doing because I hadn't, hadn't even smoked pot yet. I just didn't want to live with my parents. <laughs> it was kind of one of those things. But we all worked all our problems out eventually. And well then says laughter is underrated. You damn right it's underrated. I think what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to talk about my future podcast for a minute. This might be different. But I think I might research some funny stuff to read on In a Perfect World. And just do the whole show on funny stories that I can accumulate off the internet webs. Because I read, uh, I've read, i read some great stuff people wrote, like uh, Think Trudeau's relative was a horse thief and a bank robber. But when the, the press wrote about it, he was a... Uh, uh, he worked for, in the railroad. <laughs> you know, they just changed the defin. They changed the the delivery, the suit, their definition. So w they made what was illegal legal. Instead of him being a, a bank robber, he worked w in in high finance. <laughs> and the guy that wrote it, it was a guy named Bo on Mines that delivered it. I I don't know if I kept a copy of it, but I read it on one of the shows I did. And I'm inspired at the time I'm doing right now. I don't know, something Grimm said about fuck L.A. And I thought, man, I got a million stories about L.A. That L.A., San Diego, New York, Miami, it's all the fucking same. People, I lived all over the states. People are all the same everywhere in the end, in the long run. Their behavior. Uh, the, hmm. I mean, the real shit that we do, not not just the, the movements and the way you talk and all that crap. That's all different. But in the long run, you, there's there's just people. And certain people are more apt to do certain things than other people. And you just recognize behavior, I guess, as you go. So when you see somebody that strikes you as uncomfortable to be around, you don't be around them. It's a freedom that's that's what freedom is to me, not this law crap where everybody's going to protect me from some fucking invader. I don't, fuck, I don't care. <laughs> if that's the way you want to live, you'll, you'll bring it on yourself, you know. And what I bring on myself is peace and quiet. But I do have this tag-along internet thing I'm addicted to. So I've got all the negative shit in the world coming to me too. But some people don't know it. So I take the time on the radio, hmm, occasionally to read some links that I think are uh, important or pressing. Maybe if you don't know, you should know. Maybe if you already know, it's good to be reinforced with. Other people know, too. Oh, it's not just me. I think this and nobody else fucking gets it. Uh, I think that's where we're all at to a degree when we don't, uh, when we don't click. And that might be the right word, because it's vibration or something. But when we disagree with each other, I wonder what that's really about. Because my not agreeing with your country, or my not agreeing with the country I'm standing in, doesn't fucking matter. I can disagree about all of it, all, give that attention all I want. I just don't. I, I mentioned it on the radio because it's a fun topic to play with. 
but I don't ever sit around the house, you know, thinking of all this government shit. That's the farthest thing from my mind. I don't, I would never bother with it. But doing a radio podcast, I think uh, government is always a good, it's always a good topic you can take a good shot at. Because <laughs> there's so much, there's so much comedy in the drama. Hold on one second here. Anyway, uh, if you don't mind, anyway, um, let's see what Grimner's got. Robots have a higher tolerance to the Fukushima radiation than humans. Uh huh. Well, isn't that fucking wonderful, Grimner? And I've read I, that there is really uh, no way to identify certain levels of nuclear radiation i've heard every version of the story that you can tell about it told with a video to prove it i seen a link of a guy claiming to be handling nuclear waste on a video i forget his name but if you look at a look up in uh, what would it be nuclear physics i would or nuclear fuels on the youtube and you'll find something I could do it right now, but I'm doing radio, and I'm feeling goofy all of a sudden, thinking about Fukushima, because it's such a goofy name. You ever feel like you're being fucked by having to say Fukushima all the time? Like, maybe that this is just another one of these freaking um, diversions, or what do you call it, exaggerations? Not that it's not happened, or not happening, but... What they're telling us is part of the truth. And the truth of the truth, we probably couldn't handle. Oh, barman, give Flash an extra large dose of Gubermint Crapola. <laughs> I like my big dose of Gubermint Crapola. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and now we're going to do... <laughs> I'm telling you, people, people, people. I, I guess we'll just do ourselves in in the long run. It's not our fault. We know very little, you know. But uh, these fuckers in charge are going to keep us stupid for profit as long as they can. And they do a good job of it. And as against it as I am, okay, just as willing a participant as anybody else, because the other side of the coin is, sir doesn't want to live with me under a tree. <laughs> You know, those are the two choices. You're either free of society completely, and then, you know, you and your partner fight over toilet paper, or you go along with society for the best of everybody, because in the long run, this is what you do so that the bad shit doesn't happen in life. You work with people, and you, you go along with what's good for everybody, as opposed to being a selfish fuck. That only wants his own way all the time. There's a time to want your own way. And there's a time to give other people their way. And it's not real difficult to uh, move out of somebody's way. We got this crowded, um, like a wide enough to drive a car. And then they got tables on the sides of that for people to sit at. And big umbrellas. It's almost like a comic thing. But... You get the drivers come through and not knock anything over, or run anybody over, and it, it all works. And I'm, there's never arguing and yelling, you ran into this, you hurt me, you ran over my foot, nothing. <laughs> so I don't. I think I might be living in the land of Oz. Hey, that could be my next goal. I could become the wizard <laughs> of, of Oz. And yeah, what do you think, sweetie? I could be... Hmm, the guy behind the curtain. The all-knowing, all-seeing master of time, space, and dimension. The great and powerful Oz. <laughs> Can you imagine being weak-minded enough in the first place to see something like that with all the knowledge we have available to us and have for a long time, before the Internet came along? There was this other thing that was called common sense. Now, I'll make this little quick point. My common sense indicated to me at 12 years old that I was at no, in no way, shape, or form was I free at all. 
I, w I was a slave to the man. And 12-year-olds didn't get it. My peers had no idea what the fuck I was talking about. Uh, they had no idea how to handle what I told them about what I did when I was gone on my excursions from you know, from home at, at that age. And uh, looking back on it, it was so it was just a wild freaking time, and it, there was a lot of hippies. This is back in '71 and '72 and '73. So there was still a lot of a lot of hippies out there that hadn't given in yet. And I managed to meet a shitload of them and learn a lot of stuff about life, you know, what's going on around me and how to do this and how to do that. People would give me work and find things for me to do to earn money so I could go on my next journey. And not too many people were fucking concerned about what I was doing because I wasn't hurting anyone doing what I was doing. And then here it comes. I might be hitchhiking and some state trooper saw me. <laughs> and there you go. There went my, sh my trip. And back home they would send me. But the one thing that nobody ever asked me when I was leaving home like that was, why do you do this? And I wasn't going to bring it up and be the snitch. So it, it went unanswered. <laughs> but it ended when I was old enough to stand up for myself I suppose and say hey you know like let's not do this anymore and he did it one time after that but I was about I guess 15 and then it stopped at finally but uh, between 12 and 15 he, he popped me in the face one time <laughs> but um, we were at the I got arrested but for stealing my own watch so <laughs> it was a trip and uh it pissed him off. And then the two cops that were standing there watching him didn't do shit to stop him. <laughs> Nobody had a problem with him doing what he did to me because of the trouble that the girl claimed I stole my watch caused. But 15-year-olds aren't supposed to be out with these girls doing that shit in the first place. So, you know, you live and learn, <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> and that's why I mean... My history is so different than most everybody else's because it happened so quick. At 12, I was 14. At 14, I was 18. <laughs> 15, I was 21. And never got to be a kid, but now I can be a kid. And the radio really helps with that, especially if, if I'd have had Mary, I'd have probably been doing voices and carrying on and not open the show with the uh, Wikipedia stuff about the uh, Constitution. But the Constitution is gone. You don't have a Constitution. That was taken away by the Patriot Act. And the reason you don't really know it, if you don't know it, is because you don't care. Because it's right there. Everybody can see it. It's not a, you know, it's the gorilla in the fucking room taking a shit on your dryer. Look. It's right there, and it's getting bigger. <laughs> it's, it's not it's not shrinking any. So they've slowly taken away all the privileges of life. <laughs> Apparently, I don't know how this works because I've got my freedom of speech, with or without the permission or the approval of the U.S. government. So far, I've never been arrested for what I said. Uh, I've been called names. <laughs> I've been called a few choice names for my opinions, mostly about marijuana, hash, you know, those two things that you're never supposed to touch with your naked hands because they'll, what will they do to you? What do people do to scare you? I've never been around those people. All I know is what I read and see on the internet, but living with people that were anti-pot never now my parents didn't approve of my cannabis consumption but they realized that there was not much they were going to do to stop me from using it so i might as well use it where i lived freely rather than being pushed out of the house okay well then go do it where we can't see you do it is way more dangerous than control that was the guy that <laughs> raised me. So 
the horrible shit that he had in his head with his control kind of worked out for me in teenage years, you know, because they would rather know where I was and be okay with it than wonder what the hell I was up to. <laughs> so, so, you know, they gave me control and I took it. Hmm. Grimner, we're, we're off times on this. Grimner and Rome's are chatting it up in the reallibertymedia.com. Hey, if you... If you're out there and you've ever checked out the show but you haven't stopped in the reallibertymedia.com, it's just a crazy chat room. You could have a lot of fun. You can meet a lot of people. I met my wife on a, a internet site. Then I got my nut together and I went out to physically meet her. And that was it. So sometimes the internet... Ah, uh, cakes, cakes is back. But sometimes the internet can bring you miracles if you let them bring to, bring them to you. I don't know. Depends on what you want in life, I guess. And I mean that in a uh, in a mental way more than anything else. Because wow, we're all energy. See, I got so many different ideas about this. We're all this energy spinning around, right? So with a certain microscope, you can take a drop of your own blood. And then you could put it under a microscope and you see something floating around. It's something else. So, wow, but it's all connected. So if you do that with us, you know, instead of all this divide and conquer crap, just figure we're all connected. We're all trying to stay alive. It eliminates a lot of other things that you don't need, like being greedy and selfish and hateful. Uh, being a prick or being mean will come and go depending on how you feel attacked. Like, like uh, and well then, thought I said something to him today. Understood. You know, I, I understood that. But I, I like to be up front with people. If I'm going to call you a nigger, I'm going to do it right to your face. I don't do shit behind people's backs. That's, that's just, um, you're just slapping yourself in the back, you know, or bashing yourself in the head something stupid like that it's it's pointless and fruitless so i figure it like this if i got something to say about you i'll say it and i try to uh keep the things that i that you say that get my attention to the positive and some things that we disagree on uh, today we may very well agree on some other time so you know i always hold that door because I'm not saying I know shit. I'm saying this is how I think it is. And that can always be taken wrong in print. You know, you see it on the screen and it might read different to your head than hearing it out loud. But then again, maybe not. Depends on the person listening. And just, you know, like to say that, you know, my opinions don't uh, don't change much. They don't they don't even seem to influence me on a lot of stuff. They're just opinions. Uh, hmm. I look at the sky, and when the sky is gray, I know it makes me feel bad because I want the sun out. And I think everybody's like that. So when you go out, people are a little bit less cheery, and they're a little bit more with pulling their coat toward them, keeping the weather out, more reserved, and it's because of the weather. They ain't got nothing to do with me coming into, you know, into their path. But it's easy to uh, see something and misunderstand it with your own two fucking eyes. I mean, look at all the crap we were taught, you know, in school or through the media that turned out to be complete and total bullshit. I know. I guess Grimner could make a list of that. Take him about a week. Government disappointment. I can't think of anything that the government has claimed to do that wasn't a disappointment. And most of the stuff that they claim they don't do is true. It's, it's absolutely horrible. I don't know how um, anybody could be expected to support that, whatever that is. Oh, Christ, I gave up on it a long time ago. They own my paperwork. Just in case, because I can't type all this to Hansel. So, yeah, he's kind of... Eh. He's a special case. But, you know, to the folk that are curious about, you know, how I see it, uh, whoever owns my paperwork owns my paperwork. That's it. I'm not my paperwork. So, hmm. 
we'll we'll deal with that bridge when there's ever a time to come to it but i don't i don't see it happening it would take an act of aggression towards another person to bring trouble my way nah. just live and let live and all that kind of stuff it works so well it's called anarchy mm. yeah i interrupted myself but the uh the anarchy thing got hijacked by the movies to make it look like some kind of group chaos chaos uh bullshit where you go insane and do violent shit to no an anarchist is nonviolent by nature if anything now defending yourself is not being violent that's life you either you put your damn hands up and you protect yourself or you don't then if you don't that's not anybody's problem but yours so i'm not about that i'm just about Pointing a gun at somebody is about as low as you can be. So I'm not even against guns. I'm just against stupid fucking people that have guns. And then lately, the last 20 years, it's been the police that are stupid fuckers that got the guns. They're wiping people out like it's cool. 500 a year, they did an average thing. I think that was on a Grimner's leftover show. I caught that. I could be wrong. But I've seen so much stuff, you know. I'm so uh, unindated. Whoa, look at this. And, oh, look at that. Whew. Wow, what a world. And then I walk to the grocery store and I get to remember, no, this is it. Nothing, nothing going on here. And when I hear a siren, I always know it's an ambulance because this is an old, older place. These people are old. I mean, some of them get ill. And that's about the most excitement, <laughs> sadly, is the old people, you know, giving in to illness. Or have maybe having a, a fall or something. <laughs> Outside of that, I don't know what to make of all this. But I'll get, I want to mention this, too. Is, uh, even Minds is starting to complain on the site about freedom. They're being this and they're being that. Somebody posted a thing about a site called Gab. G A B. I wanted to get Grimm on that one, and see what he knows about it, because the more we get into the freedom thing on the interwebs, the more restrictions that are being put on, you know, put on the more popular sites. So you know, the only sites that really have any freedom anymore are sites like Grimm's. But then you know, after you get too big, like you know, Facebook is or Twitter, well, you got all this advertising and all that kind of presidents use it and all bullshit like that. Well, there you go. And who's to say that Trump's even doing anything except telling somebody, you know, of course he's telling somebody what to type. He's not Twittering anyone. Somebody else is Twittering. And that's all it takes to get somebody's attention now is Trump tweeted a, a twat to his Twitters and this is what's happening, folks, in the world. Now, I'm a little disappointed. Ugh, Trump. I didn't like Hillary either, but, you know, Trump or Hillary wouldn't have been any different. I'd still bashed her if she would have been in. Just like I bashed the idiot before her. And, boy, did I take shit for that. Boy, some of the black people did not like me, not like an Obama. But... I don't bend a race. You know, if you want to use your blackness as a weapon against me, then you're not my friend. Because I had a black friend that was clear about that way before all the trouble all started with the, the election crap. Me and Reggie were just good friends. Never considered color in it. And then Obama got elected, and some of his mutual friends had shit to say about this, that, and the other, and I, I didn't bend. Uh, Obama's a fucking punk, just like anybody else. No, oh, you want me to fuck you up, blah, blah, blah. Oh, wow, are you kidding me? Over some, some guy in a suit you don't even fucking know, and you're ready to fight someone over it. And this is what people turned into in the country I'm from. So, somehow or another, all that, all that... Imaginary freedom that we've all been enjoying all these last well, about 30 years or so, before it was real, in my opinion, till about 1980, and then 1980 came and things started to shift. Right at the end of the 70s, it really was weird, but the 80 was that was the end of it. 
I went, fuck. Grown-ups suck ass. Now I am a grown-up. What the fuck am I going to do now? <laughs> there was no manual, you know, 20 years old, and you go, wow, this is all mine, huh? Whew, you guys fucked it up pretty good for me. Thanks. <laughs> but I guess being, uh, I was lucky to go through that Ford thing. I got in as soon as I was 18. My father worked there, so got me a job, a um, part-time thing. And I was taking home two and a quarter a week for working three days at Ford Motor Company. And at the time, $8 an hour was a lot of money to make. But uh, today, I mean, Christ, it's nothing. But back in 1978, 1979, it was huge. So I had these other three days a week to do whatever I pleased while I worked at Ford. So I thought, hmm, I wonder if I get me another job during the week and I can make twice because I was Jewish. And I wanted to go somewhere, so I thought, hmm. And what I ended up getting, uh, what turned me into what I am now, started getting this second job, which was selling petroleum hose equipment. And not understanding the petroleum business going into it, I, I learned a lot about it as a salesman selling uh, products that you, you need to use oil. And wow, if you guys knew uh, how much of this shit... It could be done away with and replaced with hemp, and the hemp would outlast the rubber products. It wouldn't be. It would. It wouldn't even compare. But hemp was made illegal, and then it was, you know, held hostage because it's a cousin of cannabis, and all these stupid fucking things have happened. And here we are, with this new uh, generation of sheep being led by the freaking nose by some fucking government to believe ignorant shit like global fucking warming. Now, that kind of crap might get me in trouble with somebody, you know, so I'd save it for the radio because here there's nobody to say it to. Uh, and then, and even if, if I thought it in person in an English-speaking environment, I don't think I'd bother because you're just bringing trouble. But the radio podcast, hmm. I'm see freedom of speech. I don't know freedom of hearing. You got a freedom of hearing. You can listen or you cannot listen. That's where I don't see where the government comes in in any way to hear me or to not hear me. That who cares? It's not that fucking big a deal in the first place. But uh, if you enjoy it, it's a big deal. If you don't, then who cares? So it's all subjective, right? Which makes every bit of this all this life around me subjective so I'm looking at it and I'm seeing exactly what I want to see at every given moment that I'm looking at it and that's a hard thing to remember all the time I'm the one driving this here ship I can do whatever I want oh and goober goober got me on this idea the other day you guys might crack up at this because goober is the guy that wants to build a spaceship and get the fuck out of here uh, oh, wait, let me read this before uh, Gremner got back to me on that. Uh, I tried Gab.io when it first started. I couldn't stay for even a month. It was all a bunch of Trump state cop. Okay. Uh, kind of. Okay. No. Well, maybe it's evolved. Who knows? How long ago was that? But I'll keep that in mind. Trust your judgment. Uh, I tried to give it a chance, hoping some actual freedom-loving people would join, but no such luck. Yeah, I'll take your word for it. Uh, but as as uh, time goes forward, uh, the control of the mainstream, whatever people don't even believe is mainstream, like Twitter and Facebook, <laughs> it's just replaced all the shit that they used before it. New York Times, Washington Post, CBS, NBC, Fox... CNN, all that craps, BBC, people. I mean, I believe that my wife opens her newspaper and knows it's just a bunch of reading stuff. It's not to be taken to heart. And if it is, it'll be specific. Something happened, some mishap. This uh, building fell, was set on fire. It won't be 
We think the president is in collusion with the Russians, but we're not sure, so we're going to spend two and a half years of your life boring you with this every fucking day. And at the end, we will know absolutely nothing as usual. And that's that's what we accept. Now, I, I try to take myself out of that as much as possible by not accepting it, but... As you can see, <laughs> okay, yeah, I understand that, Graham, but you're probably right. But I wanted to ask because uh, the bigger things are, are gobbling up the middle things right now. Mine's is being eaten up by Google. If I read correctly, I might be wrong, might have interpreted it wrong, but makes sense to me because I don't trust corporate. <laughs> I don't fucking trust government, state corporate all the shit that is supposed to be looking out for me sucks ass all of it you suck ass you're lousy at it we could do better people just follow the flash three-step plan to unfunk the world and you too <laughs> see because <laughs> it's, it's all a matter of control and as long as we jointly agree to live under this control, then we're going to live under this freaking control. And the only thing that's going to stop the chains from tightening is people to resist the chains that are tightening. Now, my choices led me where I'm, I didn't run away from anything. I know I've been accused of that many a time. But Cirque doesn't want to go to America. What do I do? My wife doesn't want to live where I'm from. There you go. So, lucky me, I don't want to live there right now either. It sounds terrible. Everybody's pretty much, you know, complaining about something. I mean, I sure do. I complain about stuff all the time. But it's not stuff that's happening to me because I listened to somebody else tell me the truth about the situation and learned my lesson and went, hey, there's another way, people. Doing what you're told by a government may not be as good for you as you think. Read the label. Try that. Read the instructions. Read the history. Find out what you really are. And when you come to this conclusion that you're, you're just a bunch of electricity bouncing off of other shit, maybe you won't take it so seriously anymore and you'll enjoy yourself. Maybe you won't. Now, I have been called a hedonist. I do enjoy to have a good time. I like to have fun. But sometimes um, having fun is mental, I think. You don't have to be sitting there laughing like a jackass to show other people you're having fun. You know, Like my video games. I still call them video games. That's how old I am. But my games that I play on the internet are... They're as addictive as they were when I was playing pinball. It's all the same to me. I just ad adjust to the present time, whatever's going on, and learn what I need to learn. I've just never taken it to the level of like Grimm, where he knows how to do the coding, and read all the, you know, type this and you get that result. Put this here and it'll bring you that. I, maybe I just don't have that, that uh, awareness of logic because I think logic is groupthink to a degree. If you disagree with the logic of this, then you're an idiot, blah, blah, blah. Okay, then I'm an idiot. And your theory doesn't really make sense to me, but okay, dance around in your black robe and force it down my throat and we'll all say that you didn't and I'm an American <laughs> and all this other crap. So I don't know how seriously that... I could possibly take the after all the moves I've made in the last 20 years I don't see how anybody having done that could really take this state crap seriously it's finance it's got nothing to do with you <laughs> you're just you're just in the mix you're you're not you're not important I'm no I'm no more important than anybody else it's the same fucking thing there's so many of us now on the RLM, that's where you might hold a seat of importance. Like my friend, mental. There you go. I always recognize it when mental comes in because mental's my buddy. And I always recognize Grimm because without Grimm, we wouldn't have a reallibertymedia.com. 
but everybody else has as much a right to be there as me. I don't I don't tell anyone to come or to not come. Now we had a little incident where somebody pushed their pushed their uh, weight around a little too much and it didn't hold up, and somebody got pissed and said, "Hey, you can't do that here." Well, mm, that's a matter of you know. Uh, I don't know. Opinion, I think, comes back into that. And I was a victim of that person's uh, bad side. My wife, not so much. But me and the, the woman had words because of political crap. And not knowing the truth tends to make people angry. <laughs> More angry than the person that's angry that's trying to tell them the truth. So you end up with a friction, and there's no getting along, and everybody hates everybody. And why? How? How does this actually exist? Well, I guess it's just because uh, we all see things in our own indoctrinated little ways. Whatever your indoctrination tells you, you're gonna lean that way. Now, fortunately for me, in my opinion. My folks never pointed me towards the state and government. No, no, no. That was not a big thing. Because each of them had a different government. So which one were they going to push me to? <laughs> not only that, in the 80s, they decided to go live in, in England again. So, wow. And she came from England, and he was from California. But what a life they had with their changes. They went all over uh, the UK, Wales, Scotland and now they're both gone but uh, I've got great memories of uh, people from my past including my parents both good and bad because you know parents are parents they're not perfect <laughs> I got posted I'm doing a dork table and I'm doing it solo because got no help today hmm. I think I can make it through a dork table without anybody what do you guys think? I'm doing it, whether you think I can or not. But I think this. I'm going to make a statement to the members of the Real Liberty Media, and I'm going to say this. Punishment is the ultimate weapon of choice. Hey, Beetle. Okay, cool. He's going to catch up to the show. I'll try to remember that and say hi in a few minutes. Because the, uh, the chat and the, and the radio... One's behind the other, and I always confuse it, so I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> it's like usual. My opinion about something. So it's a really good thing that my opinion doesn't rule you. I wonder how I can make that work. Hmm. That's what governments do. Their opinion rules you. It's like I was, uh, I think I mentioned it earlier. SCOTUS ruled that you can... Uh, the cops can arrest you for filming them. Can arrest you. Not will arrest you, but can. So, hmm. If it comes out of the law and they say can, it probably means will. <laughs> you know, it de depends on what the definition of is, is, was not a joke. People think that was something funny Bill Clinton was saying. He was a lawyer. He was asking the proper question at the proper time. He he knew how to shut them up. <laughs> he was making them be quiet in legal jargon. Because if it was ever known to the public how the legal system operates, the public would go fucking head over heels insane and probably hang a couple judges just to get started. Might even shoot a few of them. But av average Joe just doesn't get it. They took away the damn Constitution with the Patriot Act. But they didn't say it slow enough for average Joe to get. There's no such thing as a Constitution. Okay, the Admiralty Court gobbled up the freaking court. So you can't use a Constitution in a court until you go to the SCOTUS. Therefore, <laughs> again, where is your freaking Constitution, Johnny? Yeah, it's right here in my pocket. And yeah, and that's the judge will tell you too. You put that, pull that out, and you're going to go to jail. And judges do these things. Judges decide what information you're allowed to admit in their courtroom or submit. Yeah, submit to them. Please listen to me, sir. No, I don't want to hear it. Shut the fuck up. And then if you talk, 
in the jail cell you go click 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 handcuffs and gorillas and these people get paid money to do that and they call it protection so hmm, I got a whole fucking list of problems already just thinking about that but if you've ever, like Vinny, Vinny's been to court and saw the game and how it really works and how they really are, how they behave. He was not impressed at all. And he talks about it a lot. I don't mean not so much, but I like to bring it up because Vinny's my pal. And what else? It's just that what's presented to us, I guess the point I'm going for here, is what's presented to us like on TV and in film and whatnot is... It's all, um, yeah, what do you call that? Fiction. It's uh, drama. And they write it right there on the damn label. And they'll even have disclaimers in the old days. Uh, this is an act of fiction. If it, you know, if you think you're in this film, it's not you. It was somebody else. Don't get a big swollen ego about it, stupid. And now, somewhere along the road, they don't even protect their self on, on paper like that anymore because I think it's in the upbringing. People don't, they don't even need to do shit like that. Somebody was saying that, like, the technology's gotten ahead of the people that are trying to control us. Because the day a film comes out to the theater now, it'll be all over the internet the same day, as soon as the movie's out. And they can't stop it. <laughs> it's, it's too big. So they'll probably write some stories about people getting caught doing things that they never did and they never got caught. It's just a story about being caught to, to try to slow down people that are breaking the freaking rules or laws or whatever you call that shit. Because owning information to me is the most ignorant fucking thing in the world. What, what in the hell idea could you possibly have that's good for everybody that needs to be kept a secret? Well, the answer to that is nothing. Now, the opposite side of that coin would be, hmm, we have secrets, because if they find out, they'll make a weapon and try to kill us with it. And that's all we ever hear. Weapons, weapons, weapons. Planes, planes, boats, ships, spaceships to freaking Mars. The Chinese are planning to mine the moon. Four fucking countries have had the gall to come out and say they've been to the freaking moon. And there's no proof of it. Not any of it. It's all just stories you read. You know, people should expect links by now. You know, if you can go to the moon, why can't you film it? Huh? Hmm? Hmm? Well, maybe because Steven Spielberg is dead. <laughs> I don't. Did he die yet? I don't. One of those director guys. Who's the guy that did the uh, original moon unit, moon landing? Uh, was that Spielberg or nah, Maybe I got the wrong name. I usually got the names all fucked up. Anyway, Alex Jones says Iran admits bombing ships. Was that Watson, the non-white Jew? Asks L. N. Well then, I don't know. I didn't see the picture. I was busy yabbering about absolutely nothing on the dork table on this fifteenth of June, two thousand and one nine. Now we're coming up to the end of the show anyway, but I don't know. Just. Uh, I was kind of hoping Mary would show up, and uh, I didn't do that. She didn't. She, I should have. I well, I did listen to her show, but I should have listened to her before that, because then I wouldn't have been expecting her to maybe be here. <laughs> she changes my mood when she does radio with me. It's always fun, and uh, I like to make jokes and carry on like a twelve-year-old when Grammy's here. And today I felt super serious about the Constitution. Because uh, such a well-written piece of, you know, document like that. It was really well thought out. Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. But what happened is it was, it was hijacked. And the legal definitions changed with a word here and there that the public didn't, was never made aware of. Because we're not members of the bar. We're not privy to their language. Even if we tried to speak it to them, they're not, we're not in the bar. Their excuse is they can't hear us. <laughs> That's what your lawyer is for. Because he's in that gang that they can hear. <laughs> so 
You're fucked. You're fucked going. You're fucked not going. What difference does it make at this point in time? You know, to people that want to support uh, violence, <laughs> kidnapping, theft, uh, but through government, you know, asset forfeiture, where they arrest the shit you have, but leave you alone. But they take your car. They're arresting your car because, well, <laughs> it could cause a crime someday or some bullshit like that. And you know which idiot with orange hair is all for this crap, don't you? Yeah, Mr. Trump. Old POTUS faggy hands wants to get his hands all over that illegal money out there in the world. Protect you poor people. <laughs> I wonder how much illegal money Trump's handled in his lifetime. All of it, because it's all fiat fucking money. We're all being screwed by like this table full of rich guys, whatever that means in reality. This group of people is holding the rest of us hostage with these ignorant fucking stories and forcing us to use the second-rate shit. Yeah. No, Rob Work says, sorry, Flash, but the con was flawed from day one. Well, some people don't have the ability to look at it in that light, Rob Works, is all I'm saying. And some people will go back so far and then stop. Me, I, I was just using a certain point. as Because the way I read this, the United States has been under martial law since 1860. Simply because... Martial law has never been lifted, and as long as the United States is at war every two years, then martial law will never it, it will never be lifted. It has to be removed, and nobody's ever removed it. It just keeps every two years you go into a new war, and a war against poverty falls under the de definition of being at war. So notice, go back and look at all the wars. Some of them are word wars. Some of them are thought wars. Oh, you can't do this and you can't do that. Telling people what they can't do always blows up in your face because you're going to get somebody like me and Rob, maybe Grimner, oh, Beetle or Frumpty or somebody with a attitude that says, hey, I don't like you telling me what to do, sport. And then... Here, there goes the friction. Now, fortunately, we don't live in societies that are openly like that. I don't think. The group of us, Rob and me and Grim. But if we did, probably avoid it and get out of it and end up where we are now. That's what I'm, you know, that's what I'm saying. If you're comfortable with your life, that's the goal. That's what it's about. It's not about the shit we're taught it's about has got nothing to do with what it's about. And the shit we're not taught about is exactly what it's got to do with. And everything else is just nonsense. So, but we have to exist. So you got to have your, you know, your moments and your, your excitement, and your downs and your ups and your, all that shit. And you take it however you take it. Some people are a little more emotional than others. Now, I think with me, it would depend on the topic. Because some things don't rock me two fucking inches. And other things, boy, I don't only raise an eyebrow, but I get hot under the collar. And it's rare, but there's certain certain ideas. Or, uh, like coming into a room and bashing people really rocks me. Uh, who's Beetle? <laughs> you, Beetle. You know who you are. Hey, Beetle. I forgot to say hi to you again. I saw you come on earlier and say you're going to catch up in the... There you are. So, yeah, I'm glad I re reminded myself that you was here. But, uh, anyway, coming up to the end of the old dork table, it didn't do much. I was trying to have fun with the uh, Constitution, and it kind of backfired on me. Um, and, Rob, yeah, I know that. And I think most everybody, the, the one guy that needs to know what you know won't listen to you. It's so, uh, it's kind of disappointing. You know, you keep telling him and he just keeps not listening to you. Maybe someday he'll, you know, I don't know. What would it take for somebody that's against what freedom is to uh, get him to, nah, it wouldn't work. Military minded or 
whatever that status crap, that all that group shit. Now nah, that'll fuck you up every time. So keep your groups small, like uh, like this. You know, electronic thing is this is pretty good, because I get along with Anti and I get along with Frump, uh, Rob Works and Beetle and. Then there's me and Hansel. Don't know why we clash, but we, boy, when we do, man, me and Hansel toss back the words like we was in a bar and we was getting ready to go outside and stomp the other guy into the pavement. But here we are in an electronic world. So instead of uh, what happens is like with me and Vinny, you go outside and you duke it out. And then after it's over, you, you shake hands and you're back to normal. It, that's the code that I was raised with. Not you carry the fight into the next fight. No, that's what the fight sows. So you can end it and move on in life. And then I got this playmate on the internet world where words are powerful, but you can click the ignore button and not read anything I write. So are they? <laughs> it's a mystery. And I think that it's all a matter of interpretation, like I've said a billion times to you poor guys out there that, that support this crazy shit I do. And uh, give me a chance to voice my uh, my opinion. Because hmm. I know it's got to be different. Even if we agree, there's still nips and you know, there's places where we don't. And that's a personal thing. So you can't tell other people what to think. You can either approve of it or agree with it or ignore it, I think. Those are probably about the three options I'd go with because uh, I think it's when I feel people are too judgmental about what I say and they're not, they don't seem to have their own idea down. You know, if what I say rocks you that much, it's either really fucked up, like I kicked a woman in the crotch because she smiled at me and I'm a married man. Or, you know, that kind of stupid behavior. You know, I would never buy her a donut. She's hustling me over a fucking donut. To be that that shallow in a public setting over money and blaming it on the gender being moochy, that's that's tacky. <laughs> uh, wow, I can't, I could never imagine a time where uh, I would ever ask, anybody to pay for something if I had money in my pocket to pay for it so the balance of life you know just you if you're free and you're easy with people when when you need them they're there for you <laughs> that's the way I think about it you know and otherwise I don't know you get what you want maybe and I think we all get this is how I see it. I think I've got what I want because that's what I'm doing if I wanted to do something else, I wouldn't have done this. So it's kind of self-explanatory. But other people got other ideas about life. You know, they got a thing to chase. I want to be a this and I want to be a that. And if that comes before the, the partnership, then there is no partnership. So luckily, I don't have that problem. <laughs> You know, I've got a, I've got a partner that can laze around with me at will. So there's no rushing and hurrying and pushing. And but when it's time to 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 do certain things, it's still even though it's on the clock, it, we've got our little rhythm about it. So it's not so uh, confining or whatever I feel about being pushed around by a clock. But me and Hannah, we meet Cirque after work. And then I can go off to the store and go get my necessary provisions. And uh, we pass the dog. So she's got her leash and I've got my leash. And we have our little minute in the parking lot there. And that's kind of cool. <laughs> I've, grown, I've grown to enjoy it. But I'm so uh, me, whatever it was. I didn't want to bring the uh, uh, walking this dog, blah, blah. And now the dog's mature. Like, I knew she would be. I've told her, I have four or five, she'll calm down. We'll be all right. But right now, she's a pain in my butt. <laughs> so, but the bad side of it is now I'm older, so that's all behind me. Yeah. Man, the older you get, the less tomorrows you got. <laughs> so, I don't think I'm old. I just think the number, you know, the number's old compared to some people. But me, I, I can't tell the difference between now and when I was like 20. 
Uh, I don't feel physical. I'm still walking, carrying my little backpack when I go to the grocery store and uh, my little walks to town to go have a beer and shit. It's just priceless. I could never have imagined when I was uh, younger that when I was an old guy that this was what life was going to bring me. I had no clue. So, anyway, that ends the Dork Table Podcast for the 15th of June, 2019. And what we got coming up on the uh, schedule here is tomorrow morning, Grimner opens up with the blues. We play some trivia. And if you're good at trivia and you type fast, come on into the reallibertymedia.com chat. Grimner needs a little competition. And, well, Miss Kate's quick and Rob works. There's a few. There's like four or five that, boy, I mean, when they're typing, they're hard to beat. Anyway, we get that done. And uh, Hal Anthony comes on from behind the woodshed 3 o'clock on the West Coast and whips out a can of whoop-ass. On Monday night, 7 o'clock on the East Coast, Grimner does Grim Leftovers. The bits and pieces he couldn't get to on that uh, Freakers Ball from the previous week because of the annoying rock and roll music he has to play. (laughs) So much music that he can't get all the stories he wants to do in. So blame the music. That's the problem. And Tuesday, I'm doing, okay, this is the weirdest one. I'm doing a, a show at 8 o'clock in Denmark in the morning, a.m., which is 2, p, 2 a.m. in uh, the west on the East Coast. So everybody's asleep when I'm doing my show on Tuesday <laughs> in a perfect world. You don't have to listen to it unless you absolutely feel like it. Because <laughs> you have to download or open it or whatever the fuck you call it. You have to go look for it to hear it because you're going to be asleep when I'm doing it. <laughs> It's kind of interesting. Wednesday night, and that's, yeah, 8 8 o'clock in Denmark in the a.m., and that's 2 (laughs) a.m. Tuesday morning in the East Coast. Wednesday and Friday, Graham Z does the Rocket Chair podcast at 7 p.m. on the East Coast. And then Thursday night, I'll come back with uh, 20% off, you know, so I can give my inner Jew a little time on the radio. And then Friday, right now, we're um, vinny He's on a river raft trip. So we'll send him some vibrations and let him know that you still care. And that's our, you know, our correspondent to the world is out there fucking off, break, you know, putting his life in danger on a river. Crazy man, but good luck to him. Anyway, and then uh, after that, Graham Z, 7 o'clock. On the East Coast with the uh, Rocket Chair podcast. And then at 11 o'clock, Grimner and Moose Girl, she's probably be back this week coming up for another exciting, thrill packed episode of Freaker's Ball. And then we'll get to find out um, all about uh, uh, Moose Girl went to this huge, big thing. It was on the internet, and all kinds of stuff, some kind of bluegrass gathering concert. But uh, they'll probably have a few things to say about that on Friday night. And then next Saturday, maybe I'll catch Mary or somebody who wants to be a victim of the Dork Table. And we'll we'll bring you another episode of the Dork Table. Anyway, thanks everybody for hanging out with me today. I had fun. I hope you did. (laughs) See you later.